Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Cobert, and today's draft class is the New York Giants. Starting with the first pick of the draft, by far my favorite pick, the best pick, was Evan Ingram, tight end out of Ole Miss. When it comes to production, he had 78.20 in terms of uh, passing yardage market share production, which is Pro Bowl level. And when it comes to athleticism, he scored 67.40 when it comes to explosiveness, 97.34 when it comes to speed, and 91.83 when it comes to flexibility for his size. So essentially, you have a Pro Bowl producer with everything in terms of explosiveness, elite speed, and elite flexibility. I don't really need to say anything more. I think that's a great pick. I think that'll bolster uh, the passing game exponentially to get a tight end that is that athletic. And it just it just makes another mismatch nightmare for the Giants when it comes to Odo Beckham Jr. And then, of course, I think it's also going to help Sterling Shepard as well when you have two very, very dynamic threats in Evan Ingram and, uh, and uh, Odo Beckham Jr. to kind of help Shepard in terms of his sort of thing. So that was a great pick when it comes to getting a very high-quality player in the draft, one of the higher-quality players in the, you know, when it comes to tight end uh, in the class. But then after that, the Giants draft class got into a bit of a weird place, starting with Dalvin Tomlinson, defensive tackle out of Alabama. Uh, when it comes to his production, he scored 15.32 in terms of solo tackle market share, 3.39 when it comes to sack market share, and 2.3 when it comes to tackle for loss market share. That is terrible. There's no other way to say it. There's no other way to get around it. Uh, that production is bad. And it's to the point where, and I'm just going to pull up Dwayne The Rock Johnson and compare him to Dalvin Tomlinson and just kind of show you some of the similarities and some of the issues because that production is so low that there are no high quality outcomes with Dalvin Tomlinson in terms of Pro Bowl and All Pro. And he's basically a fringe starter where his athleticism is going to make up for a lot of the issues that he has when it comes to his production. And that's another place where Dalvin Tomlinson fails a bit is when it comes to athleticism, where he only had 60.202 in terms of explosiveness, 44.2 when it comes to speed, and 65.13 when it comes to flexibility for his size. That is not great. And just to put this into perspective, uh, Dalvin Tomlinson was on the board, Jillo Johnson was on the board. Jillo Johnson and Dalvin Tomlinson have almost identical athleticism when it comes to their explosiveness, their flexibility, and their speed. You know, they're two guys that have above average explosiveness, above average flexibility, but average-ish speed. But this is the difference between Dalvin Tomlinson in terms of production and Jalil Johnson in terms of production. It's unforgivable. I'm sorry. Like, this is just not a good pick. And I don't care if you get my mentions or just leave a bunch of hate comments because the bottom line is this is just not a good pick. Uh, when, you, when you have a guy who's that unproductive... This is based on thousands of defensive tackles. He's one of the least productive defensive tackles in the last 20 years, people. And he didn't even test the lead as an athlete? Come on, man. Come on. Just come on. So this is not a pick that, based on the data, is going to turn out to be much of anything. And at the very least, you have a starter, and that's it. At the very least. Best case scenario... He becomes a long-term starter, but his high-quality outcomes are just simply off the table. He does not have athletic upside, nor does he have production upside. And then we get to the next pick in Davis Webb, quarterback out of Cal. In terms of collegiate production, again, I, I'm going to do a video soon talking about quarterback production, just explain the entire process there. I do have some... Uh, you know, I do, I do have some articles on the matter on draftcobra.wordpress.com, but basically his collegiate production was 86.12 when it comes to his uh, highest mark in college, which puts him in a Pro Bowl area potential when it comes to his college production. But where it all falls apart is high school production. He only scored 51.87 when it comes to his high school production score. And since the 2007 NFL draft class, out of a sample of 6,000 plus quarterbacks, high school quarterback performances in that time span uh, every single long-term starting quarterback in that time span from 2007 NFL draft class to now had at least at least 
bare minimum for a starter with 69 out of 100 and Pro Bowl level was 84 or higher. So every single multiple Pro Bowl quarterback from the 2007 NFL draft class to now in high school scored 84 or higher when it comes to high school production and every single long-term starter. These are guys like Kirk Cousins, uh, you know, Brock Osweiler, who has gotten a lot of hate recently. Like all those guys, all those kind of eh guys only scored 69 or higher out of 100. Davis Webb scored 51.87. And just to put this in perspective, this is Jared Goff in terms of high school, and this is Jared Goff in terms of college, and also Davis Webb, I added him to the chart as well. Same offense, same sort of thing where this type of offense, the bear raid, the air raid, whatever you want to call it, if you have a guy in high school who was average or kind of eh in high school, it inflates their production. Just like it inflated Davis Webb's production, just like it inflated Jared Goff's production. And again, this is just not a pick that's going to work out that well long term. He has tools. He's tall. Those are where it ends when it comes to Davis Webb uh, in terms of this pick. So I would, I just don't think this pick is going to work out long term based on that sort of stuff. Like he's just going to be like best case scenario is backup level stuff. He just doesn't have. Uh, the stuff in terms of being a long-term starter because of that high school production. Then the next pick we get to is Wayne Gallman running back out of Clemson. And Donny C. Frank, if you're listening right now, you may not be listening, but this is for you, my friend. In terms of Wayne Gallman's yardage market share production, you know, in terms of total offensive yardage market share production which this goes all the way back to the 1969 NFL draft class every single running back from 1969 NFL draft class to now is included in this study and in this study of all those running backs Wayne Gallman only scored 46.77 out of 100 and that isn't three-time Pro Bowl level that isn't five-time Pro Bowl level that isn't even all pro level on top of that, you look at his age. He only scored 59.81 when it comes to his age. And this is his age compared to Pro Bowl and All-Pro running backs. And then we get to athleticism, which is by far the area where Wayne Gallman uh, kind of hurt the most. When it comes to explosiveness, he had 23.38 in terms of his explosiveness. Speed was 39.68. And then flexibility was 41.27 out of 100. Wayne Gallman is a below average, below average producer with below average explosiveness, below average speed, and below average flexibility. It's not going to happen. Best case scenario, he becomes a committee slash spot starter, but I don't see much else than that. I don't see a high quality player. I don't see a Pro Bowl player. He doesn't have the athleticism of a Pro Bowl All-Pro player and he doesn't have the production of a Pro Bowl All-Pro player. So this pick is just not, it's dead on arrival. So not good. Uh, and then we get to the next pick, Avery Moss, uh, defensive end out of Youngstown State. In terms of his production, he scored 80.34 in terms of solid tackle market share, 61.93 when it comes to his sack market share, and 71.11 when it comes to tackle for loss market share. But keep in mind, this is at the FCS level. So you kind of have to throw a lot of this stuff out uh, when it comes to FCS level production. I'm still working on a model that's stable enough uh, to be good in terms of prediction at that level. But because there's just so few success outcomes at that level, it, it, just, it just hurts the whole thing. So uh, in terms of like getting a lot of successful players. But uh, all I can really say is Avery Moss's production is is not where it needs to be from that level of competition based on prior players uh, you know just for example guys like Jared Allen Jared Allen was 99.9 he was basically was 99 99 99 in terms of the solo tackle market share the sack market share and the tackle for loss market share uh, and then of course you have Junior Gillette he was another guy in in the study that I recently uh, looked at where he was more productive than Avery Moss so there's a lot of uh, player, th there's a lot of concerns from production because even though he is above average productive at that level competition, he isn't exactly elite. And then you come to his athleticism, where he's only scored 58.13 in terms of explosiveness, 67.32 when it comes to speed, 
is only 66.51 when it comes to flexibility for his size, which is above average athleticism, uh, but it doesn't exactly hit the sort of areas it needs to hit when it comes to really, really successful long-term sort of stuff. Uh, bottom line, I think Avery Moss is going to be a guy that can become a starter based on his athleticism, uh, but I wouldn't expect high-quality outcomes based on the production that he had at the FCS level and also based on his athleticism profile. So he's just kind of a guy that could just end up being a guy for the Giants. Or he could just be a backup, or he could just be a practice squad guy, or it could be just a guy that we forget about in four years. And then the last pick of the draft is Adam Biznawati, offensive tackle, out of, or offensive guard slash tackle, or however they're going to use him, out of Pittsburgh. When it comes to his athleticism, he scored 30.71 in terms of explosiveness, 44.07 in terms of speed, and 20.72 when it comes to flexibility for his size. That's not getting it done. Uh, below average athleticism overall really hurts kind of what you do with a guy like that. Uh, putting him inside might help a little bit, but he's still a guy that isn't very flexible. And as a result, he's going to be kind of susceptible to, to defense tackles that are more athletic than him, more flexible than him. So it's just going to become a problem in general. I think bet, the very, very best case scenario for Adam for Adam Biznawati is that he becomes a long-term starter, but I think there's a lot of things pointing to his athleticism. Uh, there's just a lot of things in terms of his athleticism that point towards failure more than success. Uh, so there is a chance that he could become a starter because he does have like bare minimum starter stuff, but high quality stuff is off the table and it's just bare minimum starter kind of stuff when it comes to him. So I would not expect too many great things from Adam Biznawati in terms of his uh, athleticism. So how do I feel about the New York Giants draft? Uh, and this is just from a data perspective, guys. Like, it's just a data perspective. And from a data perspective, it, it wasn't good. Uh, other than Evan Ingram, who, I mean, I love that pick. That was one of my favorite picks of the first round, actually. Because I think he's again he's a very he's a productive player and he's a very dynamic player when it comes to athleticism and all those other sort of factors. But when you look at the rest of the class, you get one of the least productive defensive tackles in the draft class with averages averages athleticism. You get a air raid quarterback that almost has virtually no shot at becoming a long term starter or even a Pro Bowl player based on his high school production. And based on his, uh, you know, like just based on that, and also based on the fact that previous quarterbacks out of that system, like Jared Goff, uh, didn't really become that successful. Uh, you got a unproductive, kind of average productive running back with below average athleticism across the board. You got a FCS level pass rusher whose production you have to throw out because it was at that level and has only about average, you know, he has above average athleticism, but it isn't exactly elite. And then you finish off the draft draft class with a rotten cherry on top with Adam Biznawati, who is below average in terms of every single metric when it comes to athleticism. It's not a good draft, so I don't want to get too much into it. Uh, I know, I, you know, again, I just shower me with dislikes. That's fine, but based on the data, uh, the Giants class was just not good. Which is not a good class when you look at every pick individually. If Evan Ingram hits, that'll make up for all the other sins. Because again, one of the things about most draft classes is if you have a bunch of eh, but you have one guy who becomes elite, it can carry, it can make everything look better. But I don't know if Evan Ingram is really going to make everything look nicer. <laughs> you know, like I don't think that that's really going to help everything to, to look better. So. Again, I'm, I'm sorry Giants fans, but I don't think the Giants had the best draft uh, overall when it comes to depth. And this is a team that has a lot of needs on defense. They need lots of help in terms of linebacker. I mean, the last time they had a great linebacker was what, Antonio Pierce? You know, that was like the last time they had like a, a really consistent, solid linebacker. That's how long it's been, people, since they had a good linebacker. You know, a very consistent, solid linebacker was almost a decade ago uh, and, and then you look at some of the other issues they have in terms of offense offensive linemen and it, uh, hmm. I'm sorry but 
it's just not good, Giants fans. So I'm, I'm sorry to bring you this news. I really am. I don't try to revel in this, but I think it might be time to, to find a new GM and uh, a new direction because uh, this is just this type of draft is just not getting it done when it comes to the dra this draft in general. It was another draft that you might hit on one guy and have an Ingram, but the rest of it is just not good. So. Uh, my name is James Coburn. Now you can follow my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrix. If you like content, if you want more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Just to, just to have you guys, you know, let me know that hey, you know, I want more content. Uh, I'll keep doing it. You know, if you guys keep liking and subscribing. So, uh, so yeah, just keep doing that. Uh, you can also uh, again share this. With your friends and family you know do all that kind of stuff that also is really helpful to this uh to this show so again i again thanks thank you so much in terms of all the support that i've received and i will see you guys in the next video peace